everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. And this is part two of our digital tools for covering retail training. If you go to this handout, um, the bit.ly link is right here, bit.ly slash retail tools. We'll be working off part two of this uh, handout today. Uh, you can also find uh, this link in the description uh, on the YouTube page where you're viewing this video. So you can just click in the description, click on the uh, link in there, and it'll take you to this handout. Uh, part one, we covered uh, several Google and Journalist Toolbox tools. Uh, for part two, uh, it will scroll down here to the uh, bottom of the second page uh, where it says other retail tools. So you can find consumer retail tools on Journalist Toolbox, journalisttoolbox.org, by going to our business resources section. So you can usually be found right in the homepage here on one of these little uh, tabs. Uh, you can also find it over here in recent updates sometimes, uh, or in the pull down menu where it says browse topics. And it's listed uh, right here in alphabetical order. Uh, and when you go to the business resources page, it's got uh, all kinds of subtopics in here. Consumer retail, which we'll dig into pretty heavily today. Uh, tools for covering the economy, investigating companies, sports business, stock market, uh, labor issues, Form 990s, all, all kinds of different uh, uh, topics in here. Um, so if you open up the consumer retail, which uh, is at the top of the page right now, uh, you'll see there's several uh, websites in here that can be used for covering retail. You know, the National Retail Federation has a lot of stats and studies on shopping trends. You know, so you can open that up. Uh, there's the NRF website. Uh, they have a lot of you know their most recent uh, uh, releases on, on data and things like that. It's particularly helpful. You know, post Black Friday things like that. So if you need a big picture look at retail, the NRF uh, is, is a pretty good place to go. Uh, we'll get into some other tools here that are on our handout. And the one I wanted to start with here is one called Keepa. Uh, Keepa is a free site. It also does have a paid version of it. It goes for about $190 a year. A um, little bit of a break, uh, you know, if you go annual over monthly uh, subscription. Monthly, it's a little over $200. Um, but it gives you a little more access to some of the data and things like that. What Keepa does is tracks uh, product price history on Amazon. So go to Keepa.com or click on the link right here, and we'll do some searches on some products. I've got a few listed down here that you want to practice with, or you can pick one of your own. Um, so the homepage here, I'll give you a real quick little uh, uh, overview of it. Um, it has what's called price history charts in it, which are just basic line charts uh, of the history uh, of that product's price. Um, and uh, you can uh, screen grab those, uh, you can use those uh, you know, to show the increases and decreases in price. Um, uh, you can set alerts on here, so it'll send you a little email uh, on a specific product and a price range, so it'll send you little updates. This is good just for your, your personal use too, for uh, shopping. I often do that uh, when I'm buying gifts and things like that and I'm looking for a good price on something. Uh, you know, it's very helpful and it'll send you the little alerts uh, when Amazon drops the price. Again, this searches only uh, Amazon. Uh, they do have mobile apps for this, uh, both Google Play and the App Store. Uh, you can look up international prices as well. Uh, you can also localize it. You can get down you know, to the, the local level. Google Shopping, which we'll look at in a minute, uh, will do that for you as well. Um, uh, it, it, the paid version, uh, which I have, um, is, uh, allows you to have uh, premium data access. You can also load your own data sets uh, and two, if you have the uh, product numbers uh, in a spreadsheet from uh, all the products uh, on uh, uh, Amazon, uh, you can load them in here uh, and it'll visualize it for you. Um, the data tab up here, uh, you can go in and uh, it breaks down, uh, you know, their uh, data viewer here and shows you, you know, what uh, you can uh, uh, select, uh, you know, uh, has a list of product bestsellers, things like that. Um, uh, you can go up here and just look at, uh, look at it by uh, product um, or by vertical, um, you know, beauty products and personal care, and it'll have you know, all the top prices listed here. Um, you know, how many counts, how many are available, uh, how recent the last price change was. There's all kinds of data that just floods in here. And you can look at it over, you know, the last six months or, you know, what it is current uh, as well. Here's what it looked like six months ago, 90 days ago. 30 days ago. It's a, you know, almost every interface here is built uh, uh, with this. They do have an application programming interface. Uh, so if you do want to pull 
uh, some of the uh, data out of here through an API, you can, uh, which is quite nice. Um, the Absent Gaming one's pretty popular, so I'll pull that up. It's got an export, export button, so if you want to download this data in a sheet, it's got an export button right here. Uh, it defaults to 100 rows, uh, but you know I can narrow it down if I just want the top 20, or if I want the top 5,000, uh, you know you can uh, set it to, to whatever you want. But it, it typically defaults to 100. Um, so that's you know just a little data tab there if you want to just look at verticals. If you want to search for products, uh, you can a specific product uh, and brand. You can go up here to the search button. Uh, type in uh, you know whatever uh, brand you want. I put in some uh, monitor headphones in here. Uh, and I'll do a little search on it, and it kicks back uh, my brand, a few others uh, that are very close to it. You know, Audio Technica is in here as well. Sennheiser is what I'm searching for. Uh, it'll give me some prices for both new and used. Uh, the ASIN number, and again, if you have these ASIN numbers in a spreadsheet, uh, you can load the, that data in here and, and, and actually visualize it uh, and look at the prices. So I can go in here and I can actually click on uh, this Sennheiser. Uh, and it'll show the, the graphics of the, the price variations. Uh, you know, it's got uh, uh, the new used, it's got Amazon, uh, different, uh, uh, you know, uh, places that uh, it's available on. It's got Amazon. It'll also list eBay uh, up here as well. Um, and, uh, you know, very, you know, complex graphics here. Uh, you can share these uh, uh, right down here. Um, uh, you can pull the stats out right here, the, the new, new and used uh, uh, daily highs and the, and the changes right here. So you can access all this data really easily, whether in the data tab or just in the product uh, search tab as well. Uh, so that is Keepa. It searches Amazon prices. It does have some, some eBay data in there as well, but its main focus uh, is to search uh, on Amazon. So uh, it's a good Amazon price tracker. Another good one is Camel, Camel, Camel. Um, a lot of journalists use this one. Um, uh, you know, it's very easy. You can set up a free account on it, um, and you'll again you'll get alerts and history charts. Um, uh, a lot of the uh, business reporters that I've talked to that cover consumer retail uh, track on both and use it as kind of a fact check on, on the two of them to see kind of how uh, how accurate and how current each one is. Um, uh, Camel uh, also has a uh, browser extension. Uh, as well that you can install in your browser a little tool. I'll show you some more browser extensions in a little bit uh, that you can go to and access right up here uh, and it'll give you prices on the product page that you're on uh, on Amazon, which is quite cool. So that is Camel, Camel, Camel. Google Shopping, um, which is a tool that I've got uh, uh, linked right down here. Uh, it's been producing free results uh, ever since you know, pretty much the start of the pandemic. I've given you a couple of products here that you can search for, uh, but shopping.google.com or google.com slash shopping will get you there. Um, the thing I like about Google Shopping is, is you can narrow it down by area, so you can really dig into some local retail. So say I'm looking for a, a Samsung 32-inch TV, um, and I can go in, hit return, it'll give me some results. Now, this doesn't just search Amazon. This searches you know, many different uh, locations. Um, uh, you can use all these filters down here on the left hand side. If you're logged into Google and have your location turned on, it will locate you, you know, either Chicago, Illinois, sometimes it'll say Lakeview where the neighborhood I live in as well. Um, I can select a price range over here. I, I can select if I want to buy it on Google or if I want a black TV, um, which series of television, what type of connectivity, different features with it, uh, and so on. I can also select what stores I, I want to uh, uh, look at. Do I want to look at it nationally or do I want to uh, uh, select it uh, just for uh, the Chicago area? Um, uh, as you scroll down here, you know, does it support streaming? Here's some of the other settings that it has. Uh, the resolution, the depth, I mean, it's got all kinds of ways to narrow down uh, your search. Uh, you know, look, search it by seller, national sellers. Uh, you know, it's just got a few of them listed here, but you can click the more button and it opens it up a bit more so you can really look at a lot of different uh, uh, sellers on here. Um, and again, uh, you know, it gives you local results. So you know, Apt Electronics is not a national organization. You can order stuff uh, online from them, uh, but they're based you know, on Morton Grove, Illinois. Uh, they're a great option for me because we can go in and negotiate price with them. Uh, and uh, you know, whereas these others won't negotiate prices, so whatever it's set to here, we can always negotiate it down. 
Um, so it does pick out, you know, some local, knowing that I'm in Chicago, pick out some local as well as some, some national uh, uh, sales places. You know, although I, I would consider apps somewhat national being international because you, you can go to their website and order products uh, as, as well. But, you know, they're a local family-owned uh, company, which is pretty cool. Um, so that is Google Shopping. Um, I have a couple of other tools listed here at the bottom, which are, are really helpful. Um, they both have browser plugins, uh, so you can plug them into Chrome, Firefox, or uh, iOS. Uh, one is called Luster. Uh, this one just won a Webby Award. Um, it's a, a product search engine that compares uh, products and prices and, and reviews all in one place. Um, uh, the other one is called Fakespot.com. Uh, I learned about this one from some, some folks at Gannett uh, in their reviewed.com uh, team. Uh, fake spot um, allows you to flag uh, any shady sellers uh, and people that are posting dishonest reviews on their sites. Uh, a lot of scam websites, it'll red flag those. Um, you can sign up uh, for fake spot. It's available in the Chrome Web Store. Go to fakespot.com and you can install your Chrome browser. Um, and uh, it just allows you to go through and analyze uh, these various reviews. It gives little, you know, five star ratings. You know, uh, is this. Uh, 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 rating good or, or poor, you know, as far as its its validity, uh, it uses uh, artificial intelligence to, to measure. It's really cool, so it uh, uh, will flag those reviews uh, for you. Um, so Fake Spot, uh, pretty cool one. Um, Luster um, also is a uh, Chrome uh, uh, plugin. Uh, you can install it by going to the Luster.ai. It's L U S T R E dot A I. Uh, it's not E R, but it's R E. Uh, and uh, it'll allow you to go through and uh, select from all kinds of different shoppers, all kinds of different products and do price comparisons and, and you'll pick up the reviews too. So uh, I'll just click on my extensions tab up here and I'll open up Luster and it'll just be a little pull down menu here and I can, I can search for products or look in you know, a specific uh, uh, vertical here. You know, it gets down all the way to aftershaves and air fryers to 3D printers. You know, it's got quite a, uh, quite a range. Uh, and uh, you know, up pops uh, what it thinks are the best uh, 3D printers. You can adjust your price ranges up here and, and filter, set various filters and parameters. Um, you know, if I wanted certain, you know, compatibilities with my 3, 3D printers, uh, I, you know, I can, I can uh, filter out uh, certain ones. And it'll give me, you know, various prices um, and, you know, uh, where they're available uh, as well. Uh, and then it lists uh, some of the ratings down here, you know, Tech Radar, Tom's Guy, PC Mag, you know, the usual suspects in the tech world for, for their reviews, pretty reliable uh, organizations. Uh, you can expand it even more and it'll give you even more detail uh, on the product down here. It takes a second for it to load, uh, but you know, you get into uh, much more detail down here. It'll even compare specs uh, if you scroll down deep enough in the vertical. So that's Luster. Uh, again, this is uh, our handout uh, for uh, covering retail. This is part two of our training. Part one uh, uh, we posted last month, uh, so be sure to watch that video as well. Uh, it covered Google and Toolbox tools. Uh, and keep the journalist toolbox in mind. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, you know, business resources up there. Uh, so take advantage of it. You can almost always find it in the center section uh, here or on the recent updates section on the rail. Hope this was helpful for, for you. Uh, be sure to tune in next month for our next uh, training video. Uh, and have a good week.